So this is a little bit of a break from the old routine, eh? Triumph Rocket 3R, 2500 CC, coming in in my favorite color, black on black. Batman wears my company colors, right? Um, I get asked a lot, do I do bikes? The answer is yes, but not a lot of them. Tends to be a lot more four by fours around here, SUVs than bikes. But I do have a few customers that have a few nice toys and so here we are. So not a great deal of polishing to do on this. Main goals for the vehicle, if we still call them a vehicle. Main goal with this one is to protect all of the black matte areas because they really suffer from staining and of course you can't polish them. If you polish a matte finish, you make it glossy, it's no longer matte. So, not a ton of polishing to do. I need to disassemble various parts of the, again, vehicle, are we calling it a vehicle? Various parts of the bike. Got to strip down the sort of front visor assembly. There's a gloss black piece behind that. So I want to strip that down, polish the visor, polish the gloss black area, protect everything that's behind it that gives me access to. Um, I need to strip down the areas around the front forks. So there's a carbon piece there. That's very hologrammed, so that needs probably two stages of polishing to get right. I shall ceramic coat that while it's off. And then all of the plastic assembly that that sits on, that will all be coated as well when it's off. That lets me ceramic coat the front end, polish the center of the tank where the gloss black area is. I've got to be very careful on the matte part, obviously, so I'm going to have to do a lot of taping to work around that. But that front part, the carbon and this top piece are swirly and hologram, so they need dealing with, right? And then basically ceramic coat everything that I can on the car, even these matte or satin exhaust and headers. The, the problem with your matte blacks is if they do get wet, if they do get any chemicals on them, they can stain. So we want to stop them from staining as best as we can. That's the job. So it's probably going to be Titan uh, Hyperglass on the visor. I'm probably going to use PX10 on everything that is gloss or matte black paint. I'll use the plastic coating on the plastic and then we're going to go with G238 version 1 on the exhaust on both sides and the headers. Because it's hydrophilic, it is heat resistant, which means it will stand up to the test. But because it's hydrophilic and it's not creating beads or excessive beads, hopefully we can minimise the water spotting. So we need less mineral removed. The less chemicals we've got to throw at this, the less we've got to mess with it. It's all about protection, this. I want to keep this looking good for years to come. And it's all about the satins and the mats. So job one, as always, strip off everything that I can. Take all those pieces into the showroom. Probably work in there where it's nice and warm. Uh, tape up any bits that I need to do. Actually, no. Job one is to clean it in place. I don't ride bikes, and if I did, this would probably be too much machine for me. So it's been put here by the owner. It's staying here now. So I'm gonna have to clean it in place. So I'm gonna use some steam, a uh, little bit of chemical if we need it, I'd rather not, and lots of rinseless washing, and lots of squidging on the mats. <coughs> Excuse me. Get the vehicle clean, then strip it down, then tape it up, deal with the individual pieces, deal with the bike, coat everything, put everything together, bish bash bosh, out the door, bike's looking great, and we're on to the next car. So hopefully this will be a little bit of fun, a little bit shorter than usual, a little bit more interesting than some of them. And hopefully we're gonna make this a very stealthy looking 
vehicle. Uh, yeah, pretty slick. Let's go. So now that I've stripped off all the bits that I wanted to strip off, it may seem like overkill, but I'm gonna further strip those down and just put them in a bath of Fainlab Pure Rinseless. Just because there's little bits of grit caught in all of the nooks and crannies. If I can break those pieces down easily, if it's just a couple of screws, put them in a bucket, clean them properly, dry them off with a compressor. There's even less dirt to be dragged in when we're doing the polishing and coating. So only a few of the pieces, nothing over the top. We're just gonna make life a little bit easier further down the road in terms of cleaning and coating. So let's get going.
themselves at the concert sucked in a confined space for an extended period of time. Hyped up with that. Incredibly impressive for both guys. I think, I think most fans can walk away and say that I don't know if either guy had their best showing. I think it was in some ways a pretty unexpected fight all the way through, especially in that fifth round. But in general, I think both guys gave you a lot of reason for confidence too, right? Uh, amidst all our errors. Here is. So here is my bruiser. Okay. Um, what an epic miscalculation by Sewell Gunn in the fifth round. I don't. I. Sewell Gunn, I spent a lot of time telling everybody, and I stand by it, and certainly I'll, I think I'll explain the difference. Um, this is a bit of, I think also Sewell Gunn has had a bit of a learning lesson here about some of his own deficiencies. Um, perhaps related to defense wrestling, I think grappling in general, obviously he comes from striking. A lot of his uh, striking is, you know, you saw here today, right, sticking the movie all the way in, he was clinching and wrapping, and all the way out, right, and that kind of thing, which was smart. But he didn't do the brownouts, but proper things to do in certain situations. Uh, obviously, you know, running the pipe to get on top of the fifth round is not a situation that Don found himself in a lot. But I want to tell you a story. Now, I, I've often maintained this, always maintained this, I will forever maintain this. My training experience is merely as a hobbyist. I don't in any way wish to suggest that, um, you know, you, you just you would be very careful of being the outside people who hold us down in high school and then use it as a reference point for professional athletes. However, what I will say is, and I think, you know, if there's any question about this, and you know anyone else who grapples or grapples, you know, I do believe that they can say that there is probably something to this. It is probably true that you will see a lot of really advanced grapplers get into a situation a lot of, uh, where they might stand, wrap an ankle, and then sit for some kind of leg entanglement, kill or whatever. That does happen pretty frequently, but there's a lot of different contexts to it. There can also be someone who is a little bit more of a beginner slash intermediate grappler, and what they'll do is they might not, you know, have had. He might have a better plan than like Demi and Maya. He's not a better grappler than Demi and Maya, but he's got a better plan. And uh, here we have a great plan too, right? With his legs and his arms, he can just find a solution fast. And uh, he wasn't pulling the trigger with that as much. He wasn't trying the, the instincts behind that too, like. Clearly what Henry told him was, okay, what are you good at? Let's do those. But let's do those in a more calculated, systematic, programmed way, to the extent possible. There will, it's a fight, it's chaotic, and things are gonna happen. But to the extent possible, let's let's let's, let's bring this back. Now I wonder, normally I would go into the stats a little bit later, but I wonder if the stats back that up in terms of aggregate volume. I've actually not looked. So let's see what they actually say about this. Because if I'm right, there should be a little bit less volume across the board of it from both of the three fights. Well, the first two, the, the second fight didn't go very long, so I guess between the first and the third. But let's see. All right. So this fight, 105 significant strikes for Brandon Moreno, uh, 86 for Brandon, uh, for uh, that was a bigger rate of butt, and this is a huge difference. Three knockdowns. That is, um, it's going to be hard to win fights getting knocked down three times in a championship contest. And if we look at, so we got 105 to 86, okay. So if we look at the first fight, yeah, first fight, 132, 137. So uh, about another round's worth of volume, basically, even more. And what was the average output in the second round, of the first fight, oh, excuse me, the second fight? So Brandon Moreno, 25 strikes landed, two the biggest strikes in the first round of that one, then 10 and then 12. Um, let's see this one, how did he do? 10, 28 in the second, okay. 26 in the third, those are good numbers. It's back down to earth a little bit in the play. Yeah, volume was high, so that doesn't count, no. So that's not the issue on that side. Um, but relative to the second fight, but relative to the first one, significantly less uh, uh, overall volume. Okay, I'll come back to the stats here in just a minute. So it, it didn't so much pair up in the second. Well, the second one and the third one were more alike, I guess, but it certainly was different between the first and the third. Neither here nor there. 
Philly Figueroa had great leg kicks. Brandon Moreno, I think, was a little surprised. Yeah, 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 I don't think they know that's my word. I don't think they know that's my word. Yeah, that's my word. Hold up, they gonna say what they said, play. So I skip straight ahead to the bread, play. Time to go, I'm cool on the chick, chick. Like a socket, baby. Big yeah, on the stair, what they said, play. So I skip straight ahead to the bread, play. Top dog, I'm cool on the chick, chick. Yeah, with the kid, know I got the gift, play. Big yeah, on the stair, what they said, play. So I skip straight ahead to the bread, play. Top dog, I'm cool on the chick, chick. Yeah, with the kid, know I got the gift, play. Can you slide for a real one? Can you slide for a real one? Can you slide for Baby, a real one? Baby, say I make you nervous. Maybe cause I'm real on the surface. Maybe cause I'm ten down where the turf is. Don't get lost in those facades on the guys. You know ain't nobody perfect. I just put the work in. I know what my worth is. I'm living lavish. I'm flossing, bossing, I'm bagging up cash off the passion. Out here with my niggas, AB to the casket. We reckless, stay in your lane. I'm on gas till somebody cut the brakes. Cutting off these haters in the heads of the snakes. You're spinning the plan, but you catching on late. And she just sent the emoji, said she wetter than a lake. So I better not flake. Take a break, say word. Hit me when you through with that, then we can shift again. My schedule been clear. These see me, they mad like I'm one of their peers. I put that on seat there, so I'm sure it's abundantly clear. I'm hella big on the set, what I said. Eyes low off the legal in the red whip. Put the leg room in the roof gun. Man, I came a long way from them deals off the group huh? right? Big on the set, what they said, part. So I skip straight ahead to the bread part. Top dog, I'm cool on the chick chat. But with the kid, know I got the gift, man. Big on the set, what they said, part. So I skip straight ahead to the bread part. Top dog, I'm cool on the chick chat. But with the kid, know I got the gift, man. Keep it real with you, I've been in the field in position Yeah, yeah, yeah I've been a trail, you can tell by how I feel when you with me Yeah, tell me, can you slide for me? Can you slide for a real one? Yeah, yeah Tell me, can you slide for a real one? Yeah. 
the original man. You might think it's a mini from style.
twice without too much uh, kissing and canoodling. Let's get into Project Bluebeam. Being out the West now, uh, we have time constraints, mm. so there's no uh, <laughs> no chances of getting eight and nine hour episodes. But this one is one of the one of the episodes I feel was a an underpinning of a lot of other things. I mean, it's almost like a, it's almost like a conspiracy cake. So these are the layers of sponge mm. that uh, border the creamy goodness of a lot of other episodes we've already done, such as uh, the Anunnaki, Zachariah Sitchin, Area 51, um, Roswell, uh, the Montauk Project, uh, what else? Uh, um, the other ancient ancient aliens, one yeah. and an, an, an talking about Antarctic and the Hollow Earth. We're talking about this this Project Blue Beam, wild movies. Um, there's a lot of talk about recently. Like I said, I, I don't like to be that guy that was like, I predicted that shit. It's like, I watch historical events and I see patterns and I say them and then years later they manage to manifest. I'm not a genius. It's not me. It's, it's the material. Like, the shit repeats, right? And this Project Blue Beam has been on the cards for ages. I wanted to do it in March 2020. We're doing it now and I wanted to do it before the fucking thing actually happens in real life. I was like, quick lads, let's get this Project Blue Beam episode in the can before, before the podcast is. Exactly, before they fucking uh, can't, they let it arrive outside the window here now, like in Green Men, right? Yeah. So where, uh, whoever wants to start, where the crew, uh, who uh, had a million people in Trafalgar Square, like all jumping up and down with no masks on, like, cr- like crazy pushback, what would be the next thing to be able to smear control all over everybody's toast it would be an alien invasion to come in and say take your fucking vaccines from all around the sky right um people are warned about it online now and you never you Bill Cooper maybe said something something about it but you never really paid attention is that yeah it was? well because like when Bill Cooper would say something about like Bohemian Grove you'd kind of be like yeah I could, I could believe that like there's th- something like they do go there we know that we yeah. know they go into those woods you've got the little bit of fudge um, you're like, yeah, it's definitely something weird. Yeah. Get that. But when he mentioned, like, Blue Beam, you're like, oh, wait, that guy, if you look at the last sense. couple of years, I think they have got rights for a lot less. They, they absolutely could do it. The technology is there. The technology is there. The yeah. technology is there. So, uh, yeah, but uh, you're, you're dead right, like, you know, to make it sound so ludicrous that this person will say, I can't repeat this to anybody. They'll think I'm not slack, you know? Yeah. I've gone down that rabbit hole. And in the I was, invited a few people around to the house uh, a couple of months back, and uh, one who... Uh, a couple of them were just new friends we knew through my wife's uh, sister, and uh, there's not that many. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> a relation of mine. Instagram, 
uh, uh, where it's like, it's like two weeks of that recovery, here's the thing, we, we so, so this is a man better actually, not better go, it's doing anything. Alien invasion, and the alien invasion is like penciled in at the bottom as number eight mm -hmm. for like the elements of control or whatever. Like people can feel, they're feeling controls. Like, oh, yeah. they're artificially manipulating control. Like the world over. In the Western, in Western I, again, I often say this thing. I said it to you last night when I saw the end of the hand. Claire always checks me on this and I go, oh my god, everybody in line saying this thing. And, and she goes, whoa, 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 whoa. Is it everybody? And then I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, how many people? And I was like, <laughs> four, four people. A little, a little corner over there. Four, 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 four people send me DMs that said this. Really <laughs> and and I, I feel, I, I, it feels like everybody. She's like, okay, it feels like everybody's saying it. So when I say everybody online, I mean like a few hundred people, and they're all from like either UK or US. Nobody in China has gone on with this, I don't know. Anybody in Russia gone on with this, I don't know. But there's not. And you can see it online, and then people are getting shouted for. So I, I think I was saying to you last night that, like, wait a minute, if, 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 if I fell for it, well, not for it, but I was saying as well, if everybody's talking about it right now, surely they would go, yeah, hey, 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 Jake is up already, so hold off on that until this generation talks off, and then we'll. we'll we mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. Right, because if we do it next week, everyone's going to go, oh shit, I heard this on the other podcast. Yeah. yeah, but I just think if every single news channel is telling them this is just happening, then but, yeah, but every single, it, it just become that thing again. And how would you know every single news channel is telling this? What, what do you think, you know, the more of all those It just, you know, it's easy to do, isn't it? Yeah. The greater one. But yeah, yeah. Yeah.
sacrifice. They see this guy who, you know, will slit your throat or whatever and don't understand what he's dealing with. They spent 12 weeks alone with him, just on distance management, trying to get him to understand risk mitigation and range. And, you know, it's just very interesting when you hear everybody talk about what they did and then you see it all sort of pay dividends in the fight. And the two things, I don't know if you heard me say this on broadcast, but Henry Cejudo's biggest value to figure out patience, right? Like that, that, I just kept hearing the word patience. And game plan. You know, Davidson's natural inclination is to just go out there and try to kill him. And Bird, I think, will arrive some of that. And then the episode ends that was shit yeah, terrible. But, but the thing is, it was the practical effects in the old one, absolutely. But it was also the sense that, like, the limited correctness that, sw- that swayed in the early 90s into TV. So that new one, I think, is 96, 97. Um, it was the advent of CGI. So we're talking about, like, whatever the fuck James Cameron made in Abyss was, like, you know, uh, pirated on a, on a CD-ROM and given it to those people to try to make, you know, like, stuff like Sliders. Remember? Sliders. Mm. Oh, yeah. And I had a wrecking error. Uh, you mentioned Sliders a lot. And I, I, I remember just the opening team. And yeah. I had no idea what went on that fucking show. You look at it so much. You're on a... A TV show with one of the actors. Yeah, with Tony Stevens. Yeah. Uh, uh, my boy! <laughs> <laughs> Mallory! And I got a reason. But he's talking to me and I was like, oh my god, I'm going to do this. I love you so much. You can your eye to the world. Well, thank you very much. Like, you might even stop touching your shoulder. <laughs> he goes, well, my boy, I have a gift for you. And he got to get this thing. Uh, best, from pro- pro- my boy. Yeah, yeah well, in your future, my boy. Best Professor Maximilian out of the world. And he's like, oh, so I love Sliders, but the focus special effects were the most low, just terrible shit. And it was just like a portal, a feather invented a remote control, a slide through different dimensions, and everybody had a different story. It was super 90s fucking a self-contained episode. Brilliant, like brilliant TV. And uh, and later on, it went starting in like 93 or 94 or something like that. And it was just like portal swishy purple thing, cool. But as the 90s went on, they started to shoehorn that CGI bullshit into every episode of every TV show. Something had something CGI in it. And we're making shows. Stargate. Stargate. SG-1 and all the episode had terrible spaceships and terrible CGI. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Before we go to front, there's Stargate and fucking Oh, Stargate and Luke. No, the TV first two seasons, first three seasons, maybe the TV show rules. And then they started with these, like, okay, some producers got in and said, we have to have these, like, a season arc interlinking storylines and we have to have like a, a series bad guy and all and it ruined a lot of TV shows. <laughs> so Sliders ended up having these like dimension jumping aliens that and it ruined like season seven and eight and nine terror. But they were pushing into all of this stuff, right? So V the, the new V has all of that terrible CGI and stuff. Like Shane you, you kinda of work in that industry, you know, like you see all the stuff.